And my daughter, who is visually impaired, was a member of uh, Mrs. I want to thank Mrs. Brown for this and thank everybody because the B&Ps, the business and professional women, had um, a cotillion and botillion. So my daughter was in the cotillion in 1968 and 69. They prepared all these young women. And, and uh, she graduated from Temple University. She started out at Southwestern, graduated from Southwestern in 1969, went to Kalamazoo College for two years, and then transferred to Temple University, where she received two degrees. And she worked in Philadelphia for seven years and then returned to Detroit in 1978, where she got married. And she came back to Flint. I want to tell you that Miss Prestine Massey was one of the 10 vice presidents for the American Federation of Teachers which is Michigan Federation of Teachers, but their office is in Washington, D.C. And we were in Washington, D.C. in 2003 for the voters' right amendment. So I want you to know that I'm a life member of NAACP and so many other organizations. I thank God for everybody here. We are all people of color. I have been around the world. God has blessed me to graduate from Mott Community College and the University of Michigan, and I'm still going to school. So I thank God for America. America, bless God. Bless, 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 bless. We are blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mays. Yeah, thank you, and good to see you, Ms. Nash. That's when I first met you, when I was the third vice president, NAACP political action chairman, and I know how you are. Thank you for the kind words. God bless. God bless all of us. God bless us all. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Quincy. Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy, and I just want to congratulate all of y'all on y'all new elected positions for the next four years. Y'all will be seeing me up here often, so get used to it. But um, I come here um, because just at the last city council meeting for the ones that's new, um, one of the things that I've been lobbying for is to um, get some $200 million implemented in the uh, master plan, and they did add it into the master plan, and um, I guess it's $10 million per year for the next 30 years. And the reason why um, that was very of a concern to me is because um, in the last three or four years, I applied for a grant for um, 100 NSP dollars for $108,000, and they moved it to Metawana Hills. Then I um, applied for a grant recently, last year, for $313,000, and I'm still yet to um, get this answer, and maybe you guys can answer it to me um, tonight, that when you applying for community development block grant dollars, they supposed to have public hearings. I applied for some dollars last year. The grant had to be in, I think, by January the 15th. The uh, applications come out in December. So I followed the process, applied for some funding, but I never got called for an interview. I never um, heard that it was a public hearing, and is y'all in violation of federal laws by not having a public hearing. And why didn't we have a public hearing or did we have a public hearing and I didn't know about it? This concerns me because um, if we applying for dollars that's um, eligible for our neighborhood and we don't get them and they get moved to Metawana Hills uh, um, for uh, other projects, then when is the dollars is going to um, start getting moved to our neighborhoods? Um, I do a lot of community work volunteer. I don't ask to get dollars, but I love to be able to get paid eventually one day. But if I don't, I'm still going to do. So that's not the concern. What the concern is, is that um, I don't feel like the north side of Flint or urban neighborhoods is really receiving dollars. The east side, I mean, not just the north side, but when you look at all the blight in the neighborhood and all the dollars that's I, if I'm not mistaken, in the last 30 years, I think, what, 30 billion? That's a lot of money that has been flowing in the city of Flint for us to continuously not be able to receive um, dollars on the um, north side and in um, urban neighborhoods. Um, I know it's not only the north side, but I'm just speaking 
for where I've lived in the last 30 years on the north side. And based on what I see, there's a lot of blight in the neighborhood. We tear down houses and then year after year, even before the land bank was formed, when the city uh, was maintaining the properties, there were a lot of high grass, a lot of people complaining about high grass. Year after year after year, all of us are still the complaint is high grass, high grass, and then for grassroots neighborhood groups like me and others that's out here working, we can't even get small dollars to get some equipment to be able to maintain them if that's what we want to do. So my concern is that we not um, distributing the money equally in the community. And I'm not saying that other neighborhoods don't need it, but when you look at where the dollar's been going for the last 10 years, it's so not in our neighborhood. And there's enough blight out there in the community to employ a whole bunch of young men that's vulnerable of committing crime and going to prison and coming back out and being classified how um, you guys classified, well, the Flint Journal classified Juantez Davis for um, committing a crime years ago that he um, <coughs> paid the cost for. So I'm asking that um, we look at forming a committee to make sure that that um, $10 million a year that y'all want to earmark in the um, north side per year get earmarked because I want to sit on that committee because I want to make sure it, if I want to volunteer to do something, that's one thing I do want to volunteer to do. And that's serve on that committee to make sure dollars are being spent in our neighborhood. And not only that, I want you guys to um, give me a response either tonight or at a later date to let me know that when this community development block grant dollars come up again and y'all posted in the paper that um, we have to apply and have the application turned in by a certain time, groups like me don't have to um, work so hard to put a proposal together because those who have never put a proposal together, it is a lot of work in putting together a proposal. So to put a proposal together and do all the research and make sure your I's is dotted and your T's is crossed and to um, submit a proposal to not be called for an interview or not even have the public hearing, what is the purpose of us having um, the public hearing or the um, public notice to apply for community development block grant dollars when y'all already know where y'all go put the money at? And if y'all did know or didn't know about it, I will hope that you guys um, look into that and give me a response. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Right. Yeah. You, you know, um, I want to thank Quincy for those um, remarks, and um, that's one of my biggest concerns too. Because at one time we we had the grants sharing, um, we had the grants committee, and I did share it. But when the emergency manager came on board, he um, basically did away with that. So we had a citywide advisory council that actually um, looked over all of the grant dollars or the grant applications. And they made a, um, a recommendation, and then the recommendations came to us, and then we decided um, who should be funded. But um, the last two years, that information is not coming to us. As a matter of fact, about, um, about two, two and a half, three months ago, um, they mistakenly sent an email to me with the allocations of the grant dollars. And as soon as they sent the information to me, I forwarded to, um, to Quincy you know, to let him know because we have no input um, under the old emergency manager where those dollars were going to go. And um, I was very concerned with some of the people that got money and some of the people that did not. Some of the people that got dollars um, this past um, funding cycle are people that we've had problems with historically in the city of Flint. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very strange. So that's something that I'm hoping with um, this emergency manager, um, since he wants, to, he said he's going to be real transparent with us, and as we meet with him, that's going to be one of the questions that I'm going to ask because I do know that the application, app, um, the, um, the application sh um, should come out in December or so, and then I think the closing is in January. So we want to make sure that we're extremely transparent with that, and as we move forward, that's one thing that I'm definitely going to do because information is power, and that's one thing that we uh, that we we lack a lot of times, especially with the last. Um, emergency manager. He did not share information with us. He did what he wanted to do, and we just had to deal with it. So um, I'm definitely going to be looking into that, Quincy, and I'm going to definitely get, make sure you get the information. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman hey, Nolan. No, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Mr. Chairman. M Mr. Mays. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get the answer just to, you know, I, if I have to walk out there and tell you, I'll tell you. But I wanted to respond, I'll tell you. But I'll tell you what, based upon what Mr. Murphy said, if I'm not mistaken from being in these meetings, the Citywide Advisory Council was disbanded by mm -hmm. a former emergency manager. I don't believe in emergency managers, but people keep saying you got to work with them and do stuff in the interim while we try to get them out. So why not send a referral to the new emergency manager and inquire? Because we can't give directives, Mr. Murphy, but we can inquire. And so I would send a resolution and inquire, would he be willing to let us have the citywide advisory committee again. And so send that referral to the emergency manager. The second referral I would send through you, Mr. President, to the city attorney. Mr. Murphy wants to know about some past public hearings. Did they happen, when, what, and whatever? If Mr. Murphy is allowed the opportunity to tell us which one now, I'm not objected to that. But I want him to identify with the city attorney which public hearings he's referring to. Is that for this year, Mr. Murphy, the year 2012-13 or 2013? So however you word it, I'm hoping that this referral gets to the city attorney and you give me in my mailbox or the president and I'll share with Mr. Murphy what happened, did them public hearings take place as it relates to that money. I also want to see if I can make a referral for Mr. Murphy to have at least a half an hour meeting if he can't do it informally with Mr. Croft because Mr. Croft is over the Department of Economic Development and if you're that concerned and you want to keep us up to speed and I know you've had some success in that area, I see Mr. Croft in the back right now. He's approachable, but I want to do it in a formal referral that I want to see if you can give a referral to Mr. Croft to meet with Mr. Murphy and then I'll hear back from Mr. Murphy when these three things happen and we'll move forward in that um, process with you. So without objections, I don't know how you do it yet, but we'll get smooth. I want those referrals to be so made. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Okay, our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Janice Muhammad. Ms. Muhammad. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Janice Muhammad. <coughs> and rather than say good evening, I'll say assalamu alaikum. Thank you, please. Um, yes, sir. Um, I want to bring a kind of a short history to the council here. Flint, uh, I remember, uh, started uh, closing down with uh, monies being taken away from Flint by the government. And uh, we started having schools closing down. Uh, the schools that were closing were primarily in our community. And now we have what? like two schools still open within the city of Flint or thereabouts. And if I miss one school, that, that's beyond the point, you know, it's beside the point. Um, uh, the residents are being taxed.